Well, hey all, it's Brian here today from Four Seasons Pursuits. I'm in the shop. Unlike most days, I'm out in the field doing something. It's a bit of a DIY today, and today I am making myself a smitty sled. For those of you who've ever pulled these Pelican toboggans, this one here is about a six, six footer. Those, uh, those nylon runners on them and the, the base of them, they create a lot of friction. I learned that the hard way a few years ago. Buddy and I, we were out on elk hunt. We had pulled over three miles. And I tell you, it was excruciatingly tough to pull that through even 10 inches of snow in, in some rolling hills. So with that, I've been doing some research and seen a lot of guys who are building a smitty sled. Smitty sled is essentially a set of skis with a simple base that you mount underneath the, the Pelican. I didn't have skis, so easily enough, go on marketplace. Some use downhills. I found what was available. These are backcountry, cross-country skis. They got a real nice, you know, flexible tip to run up the front. Got those on Marketplace for $15. I didn't have all of the hardware I needed for it. So what I did, I went and bought a package of screws. This was the costly part. 10 bucks for some, uh, these are 15 pieces of screws in here. And these are a number 12 by threes. Got some eyelets for tying down some anchor points. I had to buy some one by four, so I bought a six foot piece of one by four and I had some extra boards kicking around uh, the house here. So all in all, really $15 for skis, $20 for screws and bolts, that's 35 bucks. This is gonna be the cheapest DIY toboggan I've ever built. So with that, I'm gonna show you a few things that I'm gonna do along the way when I build it. Well, I got these primed up last night. Doesn't have to, it was just the, the raw wood that I'd used. These, uh, again, these two by sixes, I had trimmed them down. They were a uh, pressure treated two by six and they're, they'll be just fine for preservation. But I thought it would look a lot nicer. Paint these all nice and black, match the sled and the top of the skis. And the one by fours, I mean, they look nice. I thought about doing just a bit of a wood burn and a stain finish, but overall, I think just the, the black look very nice. Now you can mark these out where you want. I tried to have it at a somewhat representative distance so it isn't too long a span. Even though the otter sled is going to rest on the sides, I want to be able to equally balance out the weight load that's going to be on this and still have, offer enough of the front flex off the front and a bit of a tail end on the back. So with that, I've already got them pre-marked out here just where my spots are going to be drilled out. I'll drill them out with the size of the screw so that the screw doesn't catch on the skis themselves. This particular screw is a uh, 730 seconds. You just check the size. Yeah, that'll, that'll work just fine. And then once I do the bottom, I'm gonna use a countersinking bit so that the screw comes up from the bottom. It doesn't protrude through the base of the ski. It will allow itself to be nice and smooth and flush when we're done. Can't hold it at the same time as the Camry. Sorry about the shakes, I should have secured that. Well, I've got the skis all drilled out and countersunk. Now it's just the base pieces I need to do. Again, I pre-primed these earlier and I'm gonna pre-countersink the screws that are gonna go down on these as well. And I just happen to have a couple deck screws that'll work for this for this one by four. It'll work well and it'll be very secure for the weight that'll be on it. Well, one of them's done and the other one's pre-screwed. We're just gonna set it in here. One of the things to take note is when you're building things like this, keep everything as square as you can. I squared off the corners of each. The skis are gonna be set square so your toboggan pulls nice and straight and true. And an additional bonus of doing the countersinking is that it prevents your wood from cracking. It, uh, you went this hard to work on something, you don't want it to have it wrecked by, by some cracks. For mine, I chose it to be 22 inches wide. I wanted it to be just at the base of my toboggan. It didn't need to be wider. Some guys want them wider, put more gear on and stuff like that. I wanted to have it just to the width so it doesn't catch any trees, you know, like that. If I have to be going with some back brush areas, I do snowshoe in, pull in my toboggan and the, Last thing I want to have is my outside skis I'm going to be catching on the trees that are going to be coming along the sides of the toboggan. Another aspect of it, when I'm snowshoeing, I typically fill up a good, you know, 24 inch wide uh, 
snow trench. So with that, as I snowshoe in, the toboggan is following nicely along behind me, staying in that same trench, and it offers a little bit less resistance as well when I'm going to be pulling in. And for any of you who haven't ever squared anything off before, this is one way to do it. I got my tape, send the tape line in the far back corner over there to this one here. As you can see, 46 and a half inches. You do that opposite angle again. Front corner, doesn't matter corner to corner, let me do crisscross. 46 and a half inches. So my base, the wood base where it's resting, is perfectly squared. Now I just all I have to do is align the skis with that. Well, I got it all squared up. What I did was I just got one screw on each, each hole. The other ones I'll drill out now. Just get it all squared with one in each corner. Now you can easily just put in the other one on each end post. And that's it for the base. And all I have left of that is the eyelets. Well, that's it. $35 Smitty sled. Ready to put the Pelican toboggan on top. I got my tapping front anchors installed. Crossbars, one by four, just a simple little two by six. Just want to cut down. I was going to notch it, but the notch is cracked on me, so I just set it flat on top. Same thing in the back. I got another eye bolt in case I need to go backwards or secure something else behind it. These are skis are just over six feet tall, so they're just about the length of the just beyond the length of the pelican, which is awesome. And you're probably wondering why I left these here. Well, those are just an additional tie down point when you come with cross country skis. Snap in out of the way, or if you want, you can leave it back up. Wrap bungee cords. Now I can just set the pelican on top and ratchet strap it down. I'm good to go. And this thing is super light. Like, look, I'm one, one handing it here. I'm guessing it might weigh may, maybe with a thumb, maybe 10 pounds. I should put a scale on it, but that's all there is to the, the old Smitty sled. I guess I should show one video with on the toboggan on top of it. So there, that's it. This sits atop a very old set of Czechoslovakian cross country skis. Still allowing me some nice flex in the front for getting up over the snow. Adequate space underneath. Some snow is going to slide through in case I dig in. Anchor points to tie it down. This will hold my auger, my ice hut, chair, buddy heater, propane tank everything for those remote little spots I walk in or for the local trout lake. And I can't wait to get out and use it.